50 years ago, in a tiny bar called the Stonewall Inn, LGBTQ people fought back against years of oppression. Today, the legacy of the Stonewall riots lives on around the world, in every Pride March and in every member of the LGBTQ community. This monument lives so we all can explore this crucial history and add our own piece to the ever-growing story. I can tell you, it was 1962, and, and in my house, we got the New York Times delivered in the morning and Newsday in the afternoon. And in the metro section, in those days, the New York Times had a whole section devoted to New York City. Hard to believe, right? And, uh, and one of the stories on the front page of the metro section uh, was a man arrested for dressing in women's clothing. And not only did this story make the front page of the metro section, they described in detail what he was wearing from head to toe. And I was astonished. I was absolutely gobsmacked. What is this? What does it mean? And so I asked that question that, that, that every mother of an 11-year-old wants to hear in 1962. Mommy, what's a transvestite? And, um, and I got uh, probably a reasonable answer, and my, head, my little head exploded. And I dedicated the next four years to finding out everything I could about this manifestation.
we put on leaflets. We made, um, uh, medicine, I made a leaflet. Like a lawyer made a leaflet. A little piece of paper that fell that, that, that big, and, and, and three pages, and it told you, if you're, if you're arrested by the police, don't say you're guilty. Say you're not guilty, go the night to jail, and wait for the trial, and we'll try to find you a lawyer. We're so, so get somebody to try to help you. Because we're fighting this, we want to stop it. And the only way to stop it is to fight against it. Well, uh, at first it was just a gay men's bar, mm -hmm. and they didn't allow no uh, women in. And then they start allowing women in, and then they let the drag queens in. I was one of the first drag queens to go to that place. Because <laughs> we were sitting, when we first heard about this, and then they had these drag queens working there. They didn't they never arrest anybody at the Stonewall. All they did was line us up and tell us to get out. Were you one of those that got in the chorus lines and kicked their heels up at the police? Like, like, uh, Ziegfeld Folly Girls or Rockettes? Oh, no. No, we were too busy throwing over cars and screaming in the middle of the street because we were so upset because they closed that place. Every raid, if it was in an area, area, we would look. Some people glad they didn't go there that night. Some people seeing their enemies taken away and the schadenfreude and, and all sorts of things went on. We were not a, a people. 
you know, and we were the spectators. But the drag queens were coming out getting cheers because they would. But there were people coming out whose lives are really in danger now because they had to try to hide their faces because they could lose their jobs. It was all of the ugly, uh, diametrically opposed opinions and things and concepts all there. You could see it in the, just there. But that cop, you know, when he got that queen in, and I think the ride for me, in my opinion, started at the same time but in different spots because he, when the petty wagon went, he looked at us, and he was the typical type of cop that oppressed us. He had this disparaging look to us, this disdain, devised, diversive, terrible, ugly, and he was ugly. And uh, he said, all right, you faggots, get the fuck out of here, you saw enough. And he turned, confident, turned around, and uh, he looked to see what was happening over there, because it was happening, things were happening. And for some reason, we each took a step forward. And a step forward. And a step forward. And we were, I could start to see the hairs on his neck. And I saw them go up. And he turned around and was ready to say it again, that nightstick. And all of a sudden, it, to us, it was like with Dachau, we're liberated and the tables are turned. chaos. It was scary. And what happened, there was the Riviera restaurant right here. And all of a sudden, I saw in the distance my father coming down. I remember his white shirt and gray pants. And he said, come on, get your friends. We're going over to the house. So we had collected a lot of the trans and the drag queen and everything. And we're going back to the house. Who was bleeding? Who was this? Who was that? And my father knew the policeman. He knew everybody in the neighborhood. They call him the mayor of the village, my, my dad. And he said, why are you, he said, leave them alone. He said, no, we got to get them out of the neighborhood. They're, they're doing too many things, blah, 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 blah. And my father said, no, no way. So he said, Vinny, you do what you want. I'm not going to say the captain's name at the time, but he was, he was ruthless at that time. And my dad collected a lot of my friends and everything. We went back to the house. And my mom made a little triage in the kitchen, a small kitchen. And my dad called up their friends and mothers and father, whoever, who slept on blankets, who slept on here. And that night, my mom fed them, and we talked about what we have to do. We've got to stop this. It was just too much.
Philadelphia, beginning in 1964, they had had a annual reminder in front of Independence Hall where it may be 15 or 20 people. Women had to wear suits and dresses. Men had to wear suits and ties, even though it was 100 degrees. Het Dr. Hetrick, Dr. Martin came over wearing Bermuda shorts and alligator shirts of church with alligators on them. They were kicked off the line by Frank Cameron, who said, no, you have to dress suit and tie or, or dresses. And what happened at 1969, because of the anger that Stonewall had created,
1977, when Anita Bryan came out in, in Dade County, that put a spark, that really did it. I actually went some, to some demonstrations, but I remembered someone, my neighbor told me on uh, Gay Pride 1977, he said it seemed like everybody came from all directions and converged on uh, Sheridan Square. And it, were, it was huge. Everybody came up uh, Fifth Avenue and I was, you could see from sidewalk to sidewalk, an unbroken mass that stretched for 40 blocks. And I was at 34th Street or about that. And I skated into the crowd and that entire crowd, thousands, tens of thousands, opened up like the Red Sea. And they were, everybody was cheering, it was just beautiful.
rights as gay people have been slandered by a public servant. You can't say that this is just a matter of having a party. We have come here to demand our rights, which have been slandered by a public official whose taxes are paid by gay people. Taxes who are paid Listen to Drag is resistant against normative culture, and that's why it's so attractive to me. I love leaving my house, walking to the gig, if I have to, and um, I, I'm not saying I love the looks, but these people's um, structure is being shaken because they're seeing a man in a dress, looking fabulous, but not something that they're used to seeing. This is what we learn to live with, she said. And it's like, wow, there's more people that are like me now. To be, to feel safe, to feel affirmed, to celebrate, to feel loved. That is When Sierra Rivera and I, when we would march together, uh, she would always say, girl, we're always in the back of the bus. But today, I want everyone to know we are in the front of the bus.
Thank you.